Hi there. I'm Onyx Athlete Griffin Post, and this is not an avalanche course, because I'm not an avalanche educator. I'm just a pro skier with a fantastic mustache. If you're interested in getting out in the backcountry, take an avalanche course. All this information is really not going to be relevant unless you have that baseline knowledge. So today we're just going to plan a quick day tour, early season, moderate avalanche danger, and the whole goal of the day is just to get outside, stretch your legs, and see what's going on in the snowpack. So come on, check it out. All right, so this is my home area of the Tetons, and I actually have my home area set up a little bit differently than if I was just going to some random place. I have all these wind indicators here, which just gives me a quick glance at what the wind's doing and just reminds me to be cognizant of that. Um, and this is a really cool, useful feature. Say I wanted to add a new wind station, you just add a waypoint, move it to where you want the waypoint. And call this Cody Wind, save it, and then just turn on the little wind indicator, and bam, get an idea. So again, for this uh, exercise, we're just looking for an early season tour. We're going to say it's moderate avalanche danger, maybe some wind slab up high, so no persistent weak layer. And to make it authentic, I kind of chose somewhere that I've never skied. So heading in the northern part of the park, kind of found this little sub peak here. And let's call it Mount Vesuvius. And it's, uh, you know, I like this peak because a lot of different aspects, all different elevations. And it would just give you a good idea of what the snow is doing in that area of the park and has some variety for terrain based on what weather you're getting and what wind directions you're experiencing so yeah it's just kind of a unique feature but you know that said this would be like an eight mile approach for about two thousand feet of skiing so if your friend calls you and uh asks to do something like that it's probably time to find new ski partners <laughs> but that said i actually did pretty much the same thing the other day Anyway, I digress. So the first thing I do, you know, when I'm scouting is I toggle back and forth between the slope angle just to give an idea of what kind of terrain I'm getting myself into. So for this, we're really looking at these areas between 35, 40 degrees, that red to purplish color that's prime avalanche terrain. And so I like this because, you know, this up route here is going to offer pretty minimal exposure to any start zones um, and just looking back on it with the turn the, the snow mode off I can tell it's like pretty reasonable not super thick forests and it's going to offer access to these three different lines that I've kind of identified um, so it's tempting to go right into the objective and start planning where you're going but do not forget about the approach. Um, a couple different things here. You know, the approach usually early in the morning and you don't want to be just messing around and getting a frustrating start to the day because you didn't do a little bit of research on where you're actually going to go. Um, so what jumps at, out at me on this approach, let's say the parking lot's like right here. The lake's frozen, that's awesome. Easy access, could pop out in this little me meadow and start working your way up here. If it's not frozen, the summer trail, like summer trails are awesome access. There's usually just big hallways cut in the trees. And again, it's like that mindless approach that, you know, if there's some easy shortcut that you can use, you might as well take it. A couple other things to point out here, just when I'm looking at the approach, check out this forest, how dense these trees are and how kind of big and bushy these trees are these trees are going to be miserable to go through this looks like new growth so probably some sort of forest fire came through here and that new growth is just way more densely packed and if you zoom in oh, too far you can even see like all these down logs these pickup stick type looking things like that's going to be miserable to approach so i'm going to avoid that altogether and start and be looking for these trees that are the old growth that are going to be spaced out more and just provide way better travel. A couple other things just to point out when you're looking at 
your approach or your plan for the day. It's like these big clear cuts right here, these are abbey paths. So that's where like an avalanche has come down and kind of taken out a bunch of trees. And so, you know, on a day like this where we're talking moderate danger and we're not talking about a persistent weak slab, I'm not gonna be as concerned, but still in the back of my mind, if I'm traveling through this terrain, like I don't wanna be hanging out having lunch here. So planning this little approach, it seems like we can get up through here and you know, you're just trying to get out of the trees as soon as you can. This does look like kind of one of those avi paths that I was just talking about. And so maybe I plan my approach and just to do a little quick line, maybe I'm going through here. And then based on, again, the snow conditions and what I'm seeing, maybe I just kind of avoid this section, that avi path and work my way up through the trees before I get on this big open slope. That kind of gives you a better idea of where you're going. And, you know, you could plan your entire route like this, making a track for each kick turn. But in general, I think that's a little bit overkill. I'm just trying to get to that open space, make sure my approach is dialed. And, you know, once I've figured all that out, it's pretty smooth sailing. So it can just kind of onside it and look what's ahead of me and kind of Take it as it comes. So once I have my approach dialed, I'm gonna zoom back out and just look at that big picture about where I'm going, any spots to avoid, toggle that avalanche layer back on. And you know, one real quick thing you can do to pick out terrain trap zones is just looking for these areas that go from orange to red to purple really quick. So I kind of put a pin in here just to keep me reminded of that. And you can see how like funky this area looks. And so that might just be a place to avoid either making a mental note or actually putting a pin on like I've done. You take that slope on angle off and you kind of see, yeah, just how funky that looks. Um, so we got that up track dialed. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just to add a really quick pin halfway up. So once I hit that, I know I'm about halfway, it doesn't have to be precise, but I use this as you know a place to check in. If I think it takes, it's gonna take me two hours to get to this spot and it's taken me four hours, maybe I'm changing plans for the rest of the day just because I've underestimated the terrain. And so, you know, looking at this up track here, there's a couple reasons beyond the slope angle that I like it. Also, there's places to like cut in and you know dig a quick pit, do some ham pits, and you get a lot of different representations cruising up here. You probably have you know northeast all the way to like due south here. Um, and so, yeah, I've drawn a couple different descent lines, and with these three, you know, five different little areas of information, I can screenshot this or send the routes to my friends and be like, here's what I'm thinking for tomorrow. They can look at it, they can weigh in, and you can get on the same page because if your friend has an idea to ski something up here and you're only looking to do this, you need to have that conversation the night before, not on the approach. So I've got some routes figured out, I've sent my ideas to my friends, but I'm also going to send this to somebody that's not in our touring party. And that's just for safety's sake, kind of worst case scenario, if search and rescue only has the trailhead in your truck or car, that's not a lot of information to go off of. Giving them this or having somebody have this gives them a pretty precise idea of where you might have gone. So the last thing I'm gonna do is save this area as an offline map. So I'll just kind of be pretty broad five miles save and bam there you have it you have all your information i'll double check on my phone that everything got downloaded because i always assume that i'm not going to have service and having that offline map that your gps will still show up as far as where you are is an awesome tool to have out there in the back country so there you have it just some tips and tricks to make your day a little bit easier and safer out there in the mountains and remember, if you haven't taken an avalanche course, do so before heading out. Feel free to use the code GRIFF20 for 20% off all things Onyx. Be safe and have fun out there. Cheers.